What's up guys and welcome back. It's been like a month and a half since I've been back here in the shop. Work has taken me to Texas, San Francisco sadly, and Sacramento, so I'm finally home. And what's cool is I'm about to do the first track day, which I'm a little bit nervous about, but I know I'm going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be three days. We have Friday of just pure practice. We have Saturday with a qualification, and I think I have two different races to do on Saturday, and then Sunday qualification in the morning and two different races. So it's going to be really fun. It should be really cool. I'm going to do my best to take you guys with me and show you as much as I possibly can. But I've been gone so long, I have not been able to prep this motorcycle. So that's what this video is all about. Today we are going to start doing all the drilling for all the bolts because we have to tie wire everything before we can actually get this bike on a racetrack. In addition, the other thing I hadn't done yet is install this radiator guard. And of course, because I've done three track days, I need to change the oil again. So I'm probably not gonna change the filter. We're just gonna swap out the oil. And then last but not least, I ended up buying all of these like World SPK Yamaha R6 stickers, which should be identical to the R7. So I think it'll be kind of cool that the bike will have like all like the light stickers. I'm gonna use the little front ugly slop eyes as our, maybe our turn signal. And then of course we have the little uh, slits for the front running lights. So I think that'll be kind of cool. We'll install that today and do all the rest of this. Let's keep going. All right, now that we got the fairings off, this is gonna stay true to you guys if you're not dealing with a track bike. If you want to install an actual, you know, kind of radiator guard similar to this one, I will link this down below if you're interested and want one. At first, I never wanted one of these, but once we take all this off, I'll show you guys why I actually want one now. So we got two five millimeters that are holding these side plastic pieces on. So once you get your actual main fairings off, this is where you would be going to next. And there's a little pop pin up here that will remove it. Pretty easy to do. Obviously getting the fairings themselves off isn't the easiest thing in the world. So same thing on the other side, two five millimeters and a little pop pin. You just leave it hanging and it will be fine. Now it might be kind of hard to tell, but looking here at the radiator guard, you can kind of see how some of these areas are quite dented just simply from debris on the road hitting the guard or not hitting the guard, hitting the actual radiator itself. So like I said before, like I wasn't dying to put one of these on here, but now that I have to, and it's forced me to kind of look at how beat up it's getting, I think it's worth your purchase to get one of these. So like I said, I'll link one down below. We'll go ahead and just kind of install this guy right here so that it's rubbing up against this pad and not the radiator itself, top and bottom. And you can see the little lip on the radiator. I'm not going for that. There we go. I'm just going just under this little lip here. And same for the top up here. Now, you'll notice like once it's on here, like the top doesn't even really touch up here. So if anything, besides just keeping the radiator from uh, being scratched up and potentially wearing a hole, like, but if anything, it's gonna keep the dang thing from rattling on us if those bolts are not crazy tight. Cause I know that would be annoying too, is to listen to a little tiny rattle everywhere you're going. And now that I have bent these things out and installed the brackets, it definitely is much easier now to get the guard lined up over. So there we go. No way for it to really rattle once we get these bolts in. Not only are we gonna have the protection, but I actually kind of think it looks nice. So cool. Next up, drain this oil real quick. So if you can't tell there, I did replace this bottom bolt here with it, kind of two features. One, it already has all the holes drilled through it so that I could safety wire it. But in addition to that, it also has a magnet on the back. So if you're interested in something like this, I will link it down in the description. And of course, if you're going racing, yeah, you'll need this. All right, got her good and warm. There we go. So we're down to some drip drops. I'm gonna go ahead and place a new crush washer on our bolt here and start running it in. Now, if you read the manual on the R7, what really sucks is it tells you this drain bolt is 32 foot pounds. Even for the stock drain bolt, that is uh, absolutely ridiculous. And in fact, I've had people tell me that they've ruined their pan because of it. So a 14 millimeter bolt is technically 
uh, should be torqued roughly around uh, 22 foot pounds for that uh, style bolt but I also know that this is an aluminum bolt you can tell because it's not magnetized and aluminum will bend much quicker than steel so I am gonna go with 18 foot pounds for my torque spec I would I don't know any motorcycle that is much more than that at all so even with the stock bolt I would go with like 18 so there we go we got that done now we just got to fill it back up with some oil because we didn't change the filter itself we should be putting about 2.3 liters or 2.43 US quarts, whichever one you understand better. And if you're doing it with an oil change, it's 2.75 quarts. So what I'm going to do here is get my funnel set up and I'm going to start pouring. I got a big ass one gallon jug here so we know it ain't going to take all this. But what I'm going to pay attention to is the oil at the bottom in my side glass and start seeing it kind of fill up. And you can see how it's kind of running down here sideways already. And we're going to see how much we actually get in there. So out of this big old jug, we've already put one liter in there. Go for another liter close to it. Because what we're looking for really is about 2.3 liters, but we're going to check before we actually go to that full 2.3. And what I like about this kind of thought process here is the fact that you can see the oil here now in the side glass. This fresh brand new oil, it's sitting about halfway through and we haven't started the engine yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep going until I get to what I think is about 2.3 liters, which should get that sight glass really close to full. And in fact, it's at full right now, the sight glass. It's above it, it's all the way up. So we have roughly 2.3 in there, which is what we're looking for. Because we haven't started the engine, the oil level is just a little bit high, but that's okay. We know it's gonna drop once we start up. So if you guys can see the sight glass there, that engine oil is full on us. So we'll go ahead and put the cap back on. We'll start up the bike. I'm gonna let it run for a few minutes. All right, now we will wait for that oil to come down and settle. And if we're lucky, we'll be right at the right amount. <laughs> and I would say that's pretty much perfect. We're just under the full line and I call that uh, oil change complete. So now keep in mind, I put in the 2.3 liters and it was exactly enough. Most of the time you're gonna change your oil on your R7, you need to be changing out that oil filter. Remember 2.3 is not enough, you need to be around 2.6 if you're changing the oil and the oil filter. So let's keep moving on on this process because we need to get out to the track today and we still have a ton to do. So at this point, I don't need to have these bearings off anymore. We'll just go ahead and put these back in. Which if you guys remember, this is what's going to hold. They attach to our radiator and they're also going to hold our radiator guard in. Just gotta make sure our radiator guard is lined up correctly. We can start with the little push pin up top here. go and work our way down with these silver bolts. Just don't forget there is a little plastic washer on these silver bolts and what they do is they help keep everything lined up with the plastics lined up and they are a five millimeter hex key. Here. Definitely going to be a lot harder to line all this stuff up now that we have the radiator guard on there but all right, so we got that side on, we're good to go. Make sure the wiring is going through the routing. Take this guy for this side. We'll start with its little push pin. Pop its little push pin out. Stick it in, pop it in. Now we just gotta verify our alignment here. Four millimeter hex key will probably help us with that. Make sure everything is lined up properly. Bolt with the weird looking washer spacer thing. Five millimeter hex key. Right awesome, now we got the radiator guard. We are one step closer. Next thing we're gonna do is probably the most hard and annoying thing, which is utilizing tools like this, which are gonna allow us to essentially drill holes within all of our bolts 
so that we could safety wire everything. So I, I will show you how you, I'll show you guys how to do a couple of them. Most importantly, what we got to do the oil filter, oil drain bolt, and then I'll show you guys what we're going to do with the brakes here. And I'll show you one of each so that you guys have an understanding of how all this works and you can pretty much go on and do the rest. And like I said, I will link this kind of stuff down below because this is going to be key for getting this job done. Other tool we must have, obviously some safety wire and this is very, very nice and worth getting as well. So I'll link all this down below, like I said, and let's get going. We're gonna attack this drain bolt here and because we just changed the oil, it's always good to make sure that it's good and cleaned off. That way we can identify any leaks in the future. But what I'm going to do is go from this bracket right here that holds some of the fairings on and we're going to go straight to this bolt. Now what you'll notice is the rotation of torquing is clockwise. So what we'll want to do is get us pretty much double the length of what we're going to need. Maybe a little bit more than double. We'll cut off this chunk of wire here. Definitely a little too much, but that's okay. It is gonna get spun around. So we'll take this guy, we'll run it through our bolt, and we're gonna bend it around this way. And we want them to still be even, as even as possible. And this, what it's gonna do is pull to keep it from coming off. You can see that's where we're trying to go. So I'm gonna clamp just a little bit past it where we want it to go and just pull this thing in the back and it's just going to start spinning for us. And then we can push it back in, spin again, and what that's going to do is hopefully get us right on the mark. We can take these two wires, run this guy around, what we're trying to tie it down to, try to hold with our pliers again, and go through the twisting process on the other side so that it basically creates a bind like that. So now we have a nice tight which will keep this bolt from allowing it to rotate. So even if it got loose it can only go so far before the safety wire is going to keep it from spinning anymore. So there we go. We'll clip off the end leaving a tight tail and then we'll bend that tail out of the way. So there we go, there is our first one. The next one is going to be our oil filter. It's a hose clamp, so luckily I have <laughs> hose clamps sitting around in the shop. But basically we need a hose clamp that's going to fit around our oil filter. And we're gonna have to basically drill a hole through this bolt. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna try and just go through some of the meteor portion. Try and grab this, if I can here, with a pair of vice grips so that it can't move around on me. And I'm just gonna shoot right through there and then allow the wire to come through the flathead portion of it. Now if you have a center punch like this, that's usually pretty helpful so that you don't bounce around on what you're trying to drill through like that you can see how it kind of pinged the metal just a little bit and that's what we want do it a couple times there we go and what I have is a really tiny drill bit we want to be real small just just big enough to where the wire can easily go through so this is what a 1 16th is what I'm using the hard part is finding good enough drill bits that aren't going to just tank out and be done after just a couple of times drilling. This will be a first one with these DeWalt's for me because I couldn't find anything that I would have considered to be better. So let's give this a whirl. And uh, yeah, no, it's not going through fairly easily. <laughs> it looks like for me this is just going to be a somewhat long painful process which is why it's cool to buy bolts that already have holes in them but oh, it looks like I broke through I certainly did so we'll see if any of this wiring will go through I'm sure it won't be easy I tried to angle just slightly yeah we're gonna angle it a little bit more so it makes it easier to come all the way through 
but I would say that is success. We got our wire through here. So I'll probably just use this same exact bracket. Yeah, that'll work. So what I'm gonna do is kinda, and we want the force of our tie wire to be pulling this way. So we're gonna want this clamp at least over here so that as we're pulling with the wire, it's ultimately rotating. Luckily our exhaust is not hot. <laughs> Now for the hose clamp, you can feel all this grabbing. You do not want to crush this thing at all. I'd say that is more than enough. We get a little bit longer piece of safety wire for this one. I can't see where our, <laughs> our hole is at. Oh, so much fun to be old and fucking blind. There we go. So it is, I got lucky it's on this side and not on the inside. So we'll run our safety wire through it. Try and get... We're gonna half and half it, or at least close to it, like that. There we go. And we're gonna have it run down to here. So, we'll re-clamp back on our safety wire, flyer, chingadars. Start twisting away. And that is probably good enough. Now, same thing as the other side, we'll run this guy through bring them back together and keep on keeping on. All right. Scan we'll clipper, bring a little excess and we'll rotate that excess. So now we've got these two done. I'll show you guys a break. You'll know how to do it all and you can just go do the rest on your own, whichever ones you need to do. All right, remember our brakes are a 12 millimeter. We're gonna take this first bolt off on the bottom here. There we go. So it looks like, what's kind of cool about this bolt is it's receded a little bit. So we're gonna shoot up at an angle, either that or down at an angle, drilling through the least amount possible while still getting a hole in the top of this bolt. I'm gonna just take my vice grips. Hopefully you guys have maybe a vice I do, but I don't want to go dig it out from all the trash I got over here and set it all up. But this is probably better because maybe a lot of you guys don't have a vise, but a lot of you might have vise grips. So there we go. We have our vise grip set up holding this bolt. We can drill whichever kind of way we want. I'm going to try and go with this edge here. And of course, using my punch, this is very useful to making that hole bigger and bigger. And we're gonna drill at that angle right there. Definitely don't gone down potentially far enough. So I might be able to attack it from the other side as well, which would be cool. So we'll try that for a little while. There we go. All right, so we made it through. Friggin' annoying, totally destroyed that drill bit. But we got our first hole, just gotta get the other one. We can see that hole in there. Not bad, didn't take that long. Annoying, yeah. We'll get this guy torqued back down. It is a 30 foot pounds. There we go. There we go, yay. We'll get this guy put back in. Don't forget this ABS bracket. And once again, 30 foot pounds. And now it is tie wire time. So we'll do the same kind of thing. We know we want at least double. Actually, we kind of want a little more than double for this one. So I'm gonna go about that far. So there is our first hole. We'll run through. Get about halfway, and this is gonna pull down because we want, remember the rotation is this way, so we want it to be pulling this way. And then we want the opposite on this side, so we're gonna have to go to the other side. All right, that's enough. That gets us right next to this guy, which we're gonna just take one side Run it through here. 
bring it back around. That's okay. Now this would definitely be much easier if these bolts were, if the holes were all the way through them. No doubt about that. But that would do the trick. Out of the way of everything. Bend this guy out. And now technically, those bolts are gonna fight against each other. All right, so now you guys see what I got in store for me. I gotta do that to all the rest of the bolts. And I still also have to swap out coolant for some water wetter. But if you guys needed to know how to do some tie wire, that's how you do it. That's how you drill out the bolts. That's how you tie them down. <clears throat> the uh, radiator guard, like I said, I think that's worth it. Uh, before, I didn't want to do it because I figured I'd never put one on any bike before and never really bothered me. But sadly, I don't keep bikes all that long to where I start noticing how bad the radiator gets. And you can see from this bike just riding it around on the track and of course on the streets over the last couple years, it's pretty beat up and I think the radiator guard is worth having. And of course, for racing, it's a must, at least in the CRA I'm racing in. So thanks for hanging out with me. I'll do my best to show you guys as much as I can through this weekend's race. I know it's gonna be a blast. I'm gonna have a ton of fun, uh, but I also need to focus and not uh, worry too much about uh, trying to record, but I'll do my best. I'll do what I can. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.